Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and uh, we're talking about tests for gases and flame tests for specific metal ions. We will also be talking about tests for uh, other things. So let us start with tests for gases. So what is the test for ammonia gas? Remember, we're talking about the gas. To test for ammonia gas, we insert damp red litmus paper. It turns to blue. So remember that ammonia gas is alkaline. So it turns the red litmus to blue. And you should remember that when we're testing a gas with litmus, the litmus paper must be damp because litmus paper will not work if there is no water. So either you're putting it into a solution, so that's okay, or you're using it to test a gas, so the water should be on the litmus paper. So to test for ammonia gas, insert damp red litmus paper. The damp red litmus paper will turn to blue. What is the test for carbon dioxide gas? To test for carbon dioxide gas, we bubble the gas through lime water. The lime water turns milky. Remember when he says, uh, what is the test for something? You should give him the test and you should give him what he should observe. So we bubble the gas through lime water. The lime water turns milky. Now you should know that what we call lime water is actually calcium hydroxide solution. So the calcium hydroxide solution, when you pass carbon dioxide gas through it, it forms calcium carbonate, and calcium carbonate is something that does not dissolve in water, so that's why the lime water turns milky. Test for chlorine gas. What is the test for chlorine gas? We insert damp blue litmus paper. It bleaches. Remember that the litmus paper is either blue or red. If you put it in acid, it turns red. If you put it in base, it turns to blue. But if you put it in chlorine gas, or actually chlorine solution, it bleaches. Bleaches means it becomes white, not blue, not red. Okay, to test for hydrogen gas or oxygen gas, we use a splint. The word splint just means uh, the matches that we use. But we can either use a lighted splint or a glowing splint. Now, to test for hydrogen gas, we use a lighted splint. So that means I light the match and I put it into the gas. The result is it pops. It gives a pop sound. But if I'm testing for oxygen gas, I should insert a glowing splint. A glowing splint means I light it and then uh, blow into it so that it goes up just a little bit. If I put it into oxygen gas, it relights because burning requires oxygen, of course. So this helps the splint to burn or it relights. Then we'll talk about flame tests. Flame tests are tests for certain metal ions that form colors when you put them into the Bunsen burner flame. So, in order to perform a flame test, how do we do a flame test? The first thing is clean a platinum wire by dipping it into concentrated hydrochloric acid. So, this is to clean the platinum wire to remove any traces of any previous ions. Then, we dip the wire into the sole that I'm testing and then expose the wire to the non-luminous flame of the Bunsen burner. The non-luminous flame of the Bunsen burner is the part of the flame that has no color. Then I will observe a certain color due to the metal ion I'm testing. So what colors do we get? You have to learn these colors. If I'm testing something that has lithium, and remember we're testing the metal ion, not metal itself. So we're not testing actually for lithium, we're testing for lithium ion, which is Li+. Now, if I have lithium ion, that means lithium something, lithium sulfate, lithium chloride, whatever. We're testing it, it would give a red color in the flame. So lithium ions give red, sodium ions give yellow. 
potassium ions give lilac. Lilac is a shade of purple, very light purple. Calcium is orange red, or sometimes we refer to it as brick red. Brick red or orange red. Barium is light green. Copper ions are blue green. So these are copper two ions or Cu2 plus. Copper sulfate, copper chloride, whatever. If you're testing it with a flame test, it will give a blue green color. Now, other tests. For example, we will need to learn the test for water. And we have two tests for water. Actually, we have three. Uh, we have a chemical test and a physical test. So if he's saying test for the presence of water or the chemical test for water, you can say one of two things. Either you tell him add anhydrous copper sulfate. Anhydrous copper sulfate means copper sulfate that does not have water in it. So it just CuSO4. This is called anhydrous copper sulfate. And anhydrous copper sulfate is white. Now, if I add water to it, then it will become hydrated and hydrated copper sulfate, which is USO45 water, hydrated copper sulfate is blue. So if I have a liquid and I'm trying to test, is this liquid water or not? I add drops to anhydrous copper sulfate. It should turn from white to blue. That means I have water. So this is the chemical test for water. Or I could use cobalt chloride. So if I add water to anhydrous cobalt chloride, the anhydrous cobalt chloride is blue. Now, if I add water to it, it will turn to pink. So anhydrous cobalt chloride will turn from blue to pink. That means I have water. But then if he asks for the physical test for water, or the test to show that it is pure water. So I know that the liquid is water, but I want to know if it is pure or not. Heat the liquid to boiling. It should boil at 100 degrees Celsius. That's the boiling point of pure water. Now, another test that you will be meeting in organic, when we talk about organic chemistry, we will talk about alkenes, ethene, propene, butene, hexene, all these are alkenes to test for the presence of C double bond C. All alkenes have C double bond C. What we do is we add bromine water. Now, alkenes will turn the bromine water from reddish brown to colorless, or sometimes we refer to this color as orange. So you can say orange to colorless or reddish brown to color. So this is test for alkenes. That means if I have alkene, I add bromine water, it turns from reddish brown to color. What if I have anything else? No change or no effect. Test for ethanol or test for organic flammable liquid. We say put a lighted splint near the liquid, the liquid catches fire. That means that I either have ethanol or any other organic flammable liquid. Of course, if he's saying what is the smell of ethanol, the smell of ethanol is referred to as antiseptic smell. Uh, this is the smell of the liquid that we use to sanitize our hands, to kill bacteria, things like that. Okay, ethanoic acid. You have to remember that ethan what we call in chemistry ethanoic acid is actually vinegar. So vinegar, what is the appearance of ethanoic acid or the appearance of vinegar? Of course, it's a colorless liquid. What is the smell of ethanoic acid? It is the smell of vinegar. So we need to know all of these tests for um, uh, paper six or the practical experiment or the alternative to practical in the IGCSE chemistry. We also need to know these colors. These are a compilation of all the colors that you are required to know. So, for example, when we talk about group 7, we said group 7 are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Uh, their color is yellow gas, green gas, reddish brown liquid, gray solid as we go down the group. Uh, and then we're required to know the name, the uh, appearance of 
copper metal or copper compound. So, for example, we know that all metals are silvery gray in color. But copper metal is reddish brown. Now, compounds of copper are either blue or green. So, copper sulfate is blue, copper hydroxide is blue, copper carbonate is green, but copper oxide is a black solid. And we should know that. When we talk about metals and the reaction of metals, you will need to know magnesium oxide is a white ash, nitrogen dioxide gas is a reddish brown fume. You will also need to know that, as you should know, carbon is a black solid and manganese dioxide is also a black solid. We use it as a catalyst in the reaction of hydrogen peroxide to form oxygen, for example. So this is an example of a catalyst. So let's take a look at some questions on what we've been talking about. So this question says, when the air is drawn through the apparatus, the lime water turns milky. You see that he has two U-tubes. He has a U-tube that has white and hydrous copper sulfate, and he has another U-tube that has lime water. So he's saying when air is drawn through the apparatus, the lime water turns milky. Which gas turns lime water milky? You remember? Carbon dioxide gas. Now, the white anhydrous copper sulfate turns blue. State the name of the substance which turns white copper sulfate to blue. This is a test for what? That causes the copper sulfate to turn from white to blue? A test of water. When copper 2 chloride is heated strongly, a gas is given off. And he's saying that the gas is green in color and bleaches litmus paper. State the name of this gas. Which gas bleaches litmus paper? Chlorine. This is a typical question. Describe the test for something. So, for example, describe the test for hydrogen gas. What was the test for hydrogen gas? We said insert a lighted flint. It pops. Describe a test for alkenes, or he could say describe a test for ethene, propene, butene. We said, what was the test for alkenes? Add bromine water. It turns from reddish brown to colored. Remember, if he also says distinguish between an alkene and anything else. So he could say alkene and alkane, or ethene and ethane. Anything with ene will turn the bromine water from reddish brown to colorless. Anything else, no change or no effect. So, another question. When sodium is burnt in oxygen, what color is the flame? When we burn sodium in oxygen, it forms uh, sodium ions. What is the color of the flame? Remember, sodium ions will give yellow flame. And you're supposed to remember all the other colors. A solution of compound Z gives a light blue precipitate with aqueous ammonia. The precipitate dissolves in excess ammonia. A flame test is done on the compound. Now, if I have uh, something that has blue precipitate with ammonia that dissolves, you should remember that that is copper. So what is the color of copper? It is blue-green. A flame test was carried out on solid R. This is a typical question from paper 6 of the IGCSE Cambridge. A flame test was carried out on solid R and he got a yellow color. Now, what does that tell you? If I do a flame test and I get yellow color, that means I have sodium ions. So my ions are Na+. Then he said solid R was dissolved in distilled water. The solution was divided into two equal portions, and he added dilute nitric and barium nitrate were added to the first portion of the solution. If he adds barium nitrate to something, the first thing you ask yourself, what? This is a test for what? You should remember that barium nitrate is a test for sulfate, and if I have no change, I don't get a white precipitate, then I don't have sulfate. Now, dilute nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate were added, and he got a yellow precipitate. What gives a yellow precipitate with silver nitrate? So that means if he says identify the solid, it is sodium iodide. 
Another question, give a test to show that potassium nitrate contains potassium ions. What was the test for potassium ions? Do flame test, it gives lilac flame. Remember, you don't need to sit down and explain how to do a flame test unless if he's asking you to explain how to do a flame test. But here he's saying, what is test for potassium? I just tell him, do flame test, you should get this color. So with potassium, we get lilac flame. Again, give a test to show that solid A contains calcium ions. We actually have several tests for calcium ions. I could add aqueous sodium hydroxide. or uh, And if you remember, with calcium ions, sodium hydroxide gives white precipitate insoluble in excess. Or aqueous ammonia, it gives no precipitate or very slight white precipitate. But I can also say flame test. So if I say do the flame test with calcium, I get orange red color or orange red flame describe a physical test for pure water do you remember what was the physical test for pure water we said heat to boiling it boils at a hundred degrees celsius give a chemical test for chlorine what was the test for chlorine remember we have in the syllabus chloride and chlorine chloride Sodium chloride, potassium chloride. This is the test with nitric acid and silver nitrate to give white precipitate. But if he's saying chemical test for chlorine, this is the one where we say insert damp blue litmus paper, it bleaches. State a chemical test for water. Which chemical test do you want to mention? We, ma we mentioned two chemical tests for water. So if I say add anhydrous copper sulfate, it turns from white to blue. Do you remember what was the other chemical test? I could say anhydrous cobalt chloride. It turns from blue to pink. And this is the end of this uh, part of the chapter. So I hope that you will sit down and memorize all of these tests. They are very important. Okay, thank you for listening.